holonomic brain theory uh, is based on some insights that Dennis Gabor had. He's the inventor of the hologram, and he obtained the Nobel Prize for his uh, many contributions. He was a mathematician, and uh, <clears throat> what he was trying to do is develop a better way of making electron micrographs, uh, improve the resolution of electron micrographs. And so uh, for electron microscopy, he suggested that instead of uh, making a photograph, essentially, not with electron microscopes, we make photographs of, but using electrons instead of photons. Mm -hmm. And uh, he thought maybe instead of making ordinary photographs, uh, what he would do is get the interference patterns. Now, what is an interference pattern? When, when light strikes or when electrons strike any object, uh, they scatter. Mm -hmm. But the scatter is a funny kind of scatter. Uh, it's a very well-regulated scatter. Uh, for instance, if you defocus a lens on a camera so that you don't get the image falling on the image plane and you have a blur, that blur essentially is a hologram oh. because all you have to do is refocus, refocus it. it so contained in the blur is right. the actual is, image. That's right, and, uh -huh. but you don't see it as such. And so one of the main principles of holonomic brain theory which gets us into quantum mechanics also, is that um, there is a relationship here between what we ordinarily experience and some other process or some other order, <coughs> which David Bohm calls the implicate or enfolded order, in which things are all distributed or spread. And in fact, uh, the mathematical uh, formulations are often called spread functions that spread, mm -hmm. spread this out now, what you're talking yeah, about here is the, the deep structure of the universe, Fine. in a way, un, under the, the, beneath the subatomic level, virtually. That's right. Of, of matter itself are the, these quantum wave functions, That's so right. to speak. And That's they right. form interference patterns. Would, would it be wrong in saying it would be like dropping two stones in a pond, the, the way the ripples overlap? And, is that like certainly an interference? One, that's certainly the way interference patterns are made. And you're yes. suggesting that at that very deep level of reality, something is operating in the brain itself? Well, no. Okay. Uh, in a way, that's possible, mm -hmm. but that's not where the situation is at the moment. Okay. All we know is that the mathematical descriptions that we make of, let's say, single cell processes mm -hmm. and the, the branches from the single cells and how they interact with the each other, mm -hmm. not only anatomically, but actually functional interactions, mm -hmm. that uh, when we map those, we get a description that is very similar to the description of quantum events. Uh -huh. When you take into account that there are billions of these single cells That's right. operating in the and, brain. And the connections between them. Mm -hmm. So there are even more, there are trillions of connections mm -hmm. between them. And they operate on the basic principles that have been found to also operate at quantum level. Actually, it was the other way around. That the mathematics that Gabor used, he borrowed from Heisenberg and Hilbert, who mm -hmm. developed them first in mathematics for Hilbert, and then Heisenberg used it uh, in quantum mechanics, and then Gabor used it in psychophysics, mm -hmm. and we've used it in modeling how brain mm -hmm. networks work. So in, in other words, in the brain, when we look at the electrical impulses traveling through the neurons and the patterns as is, is these billions of neurons interact, you would say that that is analogous, I suppose, or isomorphic to the processes that are going on at the deeper quantum level. Yes. Uh, but we don't know that it's a deeper quantum level, I mean, in mm -hmm. the brain. It's just, right. it's... Uh, that analogous, may or may not be the case. Yeah, analogous isn't quite the right word. Uh, they, they obey the same rules. Mm -hmm. They obey the same rules. It's not just mm -hmm. an analogy because yeah. the work that described these came independently mm -hmm. of... See, an analogy would be that you take the quantum ideas and see how they fit to the brain the data we have yes. on the brain. Yes. And that's not the way it happened. Mm -hmm. We got the brain data first, yes. and then we see, uh, look, it fits 
the Literally. same mathematics. So it, uh, the people who are gathering these data, including myself, weren't out to look for an, uh, an analogous mm -hmm. process. And mm -hmm. I think it's a very important yeah. point because otherwise you could be biased and there are lots of different models that fit mm -hmm. how the brain works. But this is more based on how the brain was found to work independent of these conceptions. <music>